Thursday night NFL, Bills, Dolphins. We'll be talking about that in just a little bit. But first, some free Major League Baseball winners to dole out. And we're throwing you a curveball on the show today, going college game day, bringing in our own celebrity guest picker. Yes, a man that needs no introduction, the one, the only, Adam Trigger. Welcome to the Morning Wager. And you are going to enlighten us like only you can on the Rockies and Tigers because all of a sudden the Detroit Tigers seemingly cannot be stopped. Yeah, Brian, I'm going to throw the viewers another curveball because they know me from all the other shows, and I know they're expecting me to come on and make a case for the Rockies here, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to make a case for the Tigers. Tigers minus one and a half. Not my typical style, but it might be the worst spot ever for the Rockies, and I'm going to quickly explain why. So you talked about the Tigers. Red Hot, our, our, our pals from the home office up in Detroit might see some playoff baseball this year the way this is trending because um, they have the best record in Major League Baseball since August 11th. They're not only, not only do they have the best win-loss record, they're leading the league in run differential, and their staff ERA is, is top in the league as well. Four straight wins. Brian has them just three games back of the Twins right now for a wild card spot. And, and as crazy as that is, they actually kind of control their own destiny because they've got a series coming up against the Royals who are just another sort of game ahead. So maybe two chances to run down one of those teams for a wild card spot. But I'm going to talk about why this spot is horrific for the Rockies. Yesterday on first pitch, I made a case for Rockies plus one and a half. It fell short. They lost the game seven to four, but but they played it out as if this would as if that was the one they had a chance to win. Um, they used Luis Peralta for an inning. They used An uh, Angel Shavili for two innings. Um, and, and what I said yesterday was those are really the two best bullpen arms they have at this point. Uh, both have been lights out since August 1st. Both were great in yesterday's game. But if you look at how they've managed their bullpen, I can just about guarantee you you're not going to see either of those guys in the game today. And then you add on the fact that they've got the Cubs coming into town at Coors Field this weekend. That's always a huge series for them. They get a great draw. A lot of Chicago fans make the trip uh, from Illinois out to, to Denver for that series. So without a doubt, Rockies are going to prioritize this weekend at home against the Cubs more so than they will a, a day game, get out of town game against the Tigers. And why wouldn't you, right? Like they're up against Tariq Skubal. The, the Rockies have some of the best or the worst road splits you're going to find in Major League Baseball, and now they've got to go against Scoobal and his 0.95 whip. He's been one of the best starting pitchers in the league all year. And so even with Feltner being one of their better guys, just a huge advantage with Scoobal and then the bullpen advantage for the Tigers, since you're probably not going to see any of the Rockies kind of top relief arms here. My guess is everyone rests today, and they've got them going for that Cubs series. So I actually couldn't believe the minus one and a half was like minus 110. I thought all things considered that minus one and a half would have been juiced up to like minus 130, minus 140. So I think the Tigers is a no brainer to win this game. And I think you could actually lay it. The, one of the rare scenarios, Brian, where I might say it's okay to lay the, the, the one and a half with the home team uh, just feels like a spot where the Rockies have no chance. And the Tigers, they need it badly. If they're going to have any shot at the wild card, they can't lose this game. So um, Tigers get it done and probably by more than one run. Trig jumping on the show early, and you never know what you're going to get. There you go. Laying the one and a half with the home team. Smash that like button if you're rolling with Trig there. For my half of the double play, I'm going to talk Red Sox-Yankees. Always a big game. The rivalry renewed this weekend in the Bronx. Both teams win in dramatic fashion last night. The Red Sox with the walk-off three-run homer. The Yankees needed extras to beat the Royals. That was a best bet winner here yesterday on the morning wager. Now, when these teams meet head-to-head, -head, the story has been, at least in 2024, overs. Over 6-2-1 and one, uh, in the nine meetings. Only two of those games didn't get to nine runs. And, Trick, I like the over nine tonight. I would not play it any higher than nine for the record. I think DK, uh, DraftKings, that is, uh, is still hanging eight and a half. But we got Nasty Nestor back on the mound for the Yankees. Uh, Trick, Mark Zinno has been saying some incredibly nasty things about Nestor here on the morning wager. He mocks the man's weight, his family. It's really uncalled for stuff. <laughs> but I'm going to rip on the fact that Cortez has allowed five runs in two of his last three home starts. That's not good. And what do we know about this Red Sox lineup? We've been talking about it all year, guys. They average more runs on the road than at Fenway. They're one of seven teams in all of baseball averaging five or more runs per game on the road. So I think the Red Sox are going to score here. Then Cooper Criswell... 
He's starting for Boston. He's been very good of late, actually, but still a 4.43 ERA on the road, so I'm not buying his recent form. And as I have said, whether it's on this show, on the Power Five, or any show uh, they'll have me on, this Red Sox bullpen is absolutely atrocious. The worst ERA in baseball since the break. Worse than the White Sox. When you have a worse bullpen than the Chicago White Sox, that is truly saying something. This Red Sox bullpen since the break has an ERA north of six. So over nine, it is between the Yankees and Red Sox. For me to go along with Trigg, Tigers one and a half now. We're still giving you, we always give you three plays every day here on the Morning Wager, and we are going to still give you three plays here on the show today because Mark Zinno is determined to be a part of this program, okay? For, throw us a like. This man is in his car, okay, serving the United States of America, and he's still giving out winners. The last two days, he's, he gave you the Diamondbacks money line. They won easily, and he gave you the over in the Twins Angels. So let's now kick it to Mark. He's talking A's Angels, or pardon me, A's Astros. And as always, Framber is the color of Mark's energy. Hey, BP, uh, and big thanks to Trig here this morning for uh, filling in for me as we got uh, a lot of football to get to. But day four of Cappers and Cars, one more day left, guys, and I'll be back in the saddle normally. But uh, let's take a look at my half of the double play, uh, Houston. Framba Valdez has been stellar at home. A 2.46 ERA and a whip just a shade over one. Opponents hitting just 208 against him. You have to go back to July 31st, the last time Valdez gave up a run at home. And in fact, he's given up just seven runs at home since June 1st. So he's been on fire. A's bottom 10 in batting average on the road this season. Third highest strikeout rate as well. Houston top five in batting average and WRC plus at home this season. Seventh in OPS and in runs scored. A starter Mitch Spence. ERA over five on the road. Astros lost the first two games of the series. Don't want to get swept here, so hopefully they jump out early. We'll lay it half run with the Astros in the first five. And Mark would like to remind you all that he has a big 4% play on the Thursday night football game, which Trigg and I are going to be breaking down here in just a little bit. Head on over to wt.buzz slash mz for that. Of course, when it comes to football, if you like football winners, you can jump on board Zinno, myself, or Trigg. Great special offer we've got going on right now at wagertalk.com, where you can get all NFL and college plays from any of us for just $199 for the next four weeks. That is just, that is under $50 per week, obviously. Trig, I know you are locked and loaded for the weekend. My man, already some plays up. Why don't you tell the people what uh, they can find at your page? Yeah, that great special, um, you know, college and, and NFL covered in one package. So check that out for any handicapper. And I'm 2-0 in the MLB so far this week. Um, still grinding it out on the bases, even though football has started. Uh, I'm going to have a play for Thursday, and it's possible to be a 5%, so keep an eye out for that. If not, it's going to be 4%, but that will be up on my page shortly. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned, wt.buzz slash at. All right, Bills-Dolphins, very interesting matchup. Let's get into this. Uh, favorites, by the way, won all four primetime games last week, so the public did well. The over was, uh, what, we had, we had only one under in the four games. It was... Uh, the Lions, uh, uh, Rams, as a matter of fact. So um, the public did well in those games. Well, let's talk about this game. You had both teams coming from behind to win last week. Uh, I did not think the Dolphins really deserved to win that game against the Jaguars. They're down 17-7. Jacksonville's marching in for a touchdown that would probably put the game to bed. What do they do? Typical Jags fashion. They fumble. Miami recovers. They score a touchdown the next play. And then Miami winds up winning the game. Buffalo? Their defense isn't very good, but Josh Allen, I think, is going to carry that offense, and they'll be just fine. They come from behind to beat the Cardinals. Um, you, you talk about line movement as well as anyone, so I want to throw this to you. The, the, I saw a lot of people jump on the under right away in this game. It opened 51, and it's been bet down. At this point, I know you're not a totals person, but at this point, you, you've missed the best of the number, and if you like the under, it might be time to think something else, right? Yeah, I mean, I will give my opinion on the total here. Um, I, I just don't okay. – I, I, over the years, I haven't bet as many of them. I feel like I, I don't, like, quantify the moves and, and stuff like that as, as well, so I focus more on sides. But I would play back at that move here, Brian. Like, at this point, okay. at 49, I think you have to look at the over. Like, you know, defensively, both of these teams have issues right now. Um, you know, Josh Allen and the Bills' offense looked fantastic last week. Once they got going, you, you, you weren't going to stop them now. The Cardinals have a poor defense, obviously, like one of the worst secondaries in the league. So you maybe have to take that a little bit with a grain of salt. But 
the, the Bills are, are probably going to move the ball here. Like, I, I thought their offense looked good, and I wouldn't be surprised if they have offensive success. But my biggest thing in this game is, is how are the Bills stopping this Dolphins offense? I know, you know, the Dolphins didn't have their, you know, a banner performance last week, but, you know, they still found a way. And this is still a Dolphins offense that I think probably moves the ball at will here. I, I think you're going to, you know, people are going to forget now that just because the Bills won one game, uh, how big of a deal it is that Matt Milano is not there. Um, you know, totally mm-hmm. leaving the middle yeah. of the field open at times to the Cardinals. Their secondary is, is, is questionable, in my opinion, the Bills, that is. So my question to you, Brian, who's stopping oh. Tyreek Hill? Who's stopping Tyreek Hill on this Bills defense? And I could see, like, I could see the, the Bills having a hard time getting off the field here. Like, McDaniel's yes. a great game plan, great scheme guy. I could see the uh, the Dolphins in third and long, but I see them converting those, and it, it could be a little bit demoralizing for the Bills. So my leans here are, are, are Dolphins and over. Haven't played either yet, but that's kind of how I see the game going. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth with that because my concern with playing the under at any number, even if you got it at the, even if you got the best number, is the Bills' defense ability to stop this Miami offense. I know the Miami offense did not have a banner performance in Week One. I, you know, I mean, for goodness sakes, Tyreek Hill, the man was you know pulled over and had to deal with the police before the game. I don't know what kind of effect <laughs> that had, if any, but it probably had something to do with it. So there, yeah, I, I think you're right. Buffalo's going to struggle to get stops. In, in this this season, I think they're going to be an over team, much like the Arizona. You know, I wasn't surprised at all to see that Buffalo Arizona game get over. Those are both over teams. Arizona is going to be a really fun team to watch. Just you know, not for nothing this year. I think they're all offense and no defense too. But I'll throw this back to you. Um, I know again, you, you don't do a lot with teasers, but I've seen a lot of chatter online, and it's chatter. I agree with you. Look at the history of this AFC East rivalry, it's not been, at least recently, has not been kind to Miami. The last time Miami covered a a two-and-a-half-point spread against Buffalo was 2016, apparently. And then you have to go, it's 19 straight match. If you tease, so Buffalo's plus two-and-a-half. If you tease them up to eight-and-a-half, the last time Miami would have beaten Buffalo by more than eight-and-a-half points, so by nine, would have been 2014. So what do you think? There's a lot of appealing teaser options on the Sunday card. I think I try. I have a bunch circled. What do you think about teasing Buffalo through the key numbers of three and seven here? Is that enough maybe to alleviate your concerns about the defense? Okay, so obviously it's it's one of those nice long legs. Numbers play, it makes sense. I got to be honest, mm-hmm. Brian. I, I, I would have my concerns, and here's why. The, the Dolphins came up here last week, week four, after starting the season 3-0, and and the Bills absolutely laid it to them, beat them by 30, mm-hmm. like, like relentless beat down. Uh, I believe the final score was 48-20. to And I, I think my concern is, is the fact, like what you were saying, you, they haven't had like a ton of success in this series, like over the, over the past couple of years. I think if the Dolphins get the chance, I think they're going to run the, bil- the Bills out of, their bil- out of their own building tonight. Like if it, if it shapes up that way, I don't think they're going to hold back. So that's my only concern. Obviously, it makes sense the two and a half to go through the key numbers. I'm not saying it doesn't. Do I do I like that side? You know, not really because I do think if this game was going to get out of hand one way or the other, it, it's the Dolphins kind of like running it up uh, just because of of what happened last year. Bills, uh, I think, just absolutely torched them in that early season game up here in Buffalo. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Dolphins wanted to return the favor. Yep. Uh, You bring up that game. I'm very glad you brought that up. We did not plan this at all, ladies and gentlemen. That game last year where Buffalo beat Miami early season, that was a 5% play for yours truly. I was the $2 handicapper that day, as a matter of fact, Trig. That was a very, very big win. I remember pacing around the room for like a maniac for an hour before kickoff waiting for that. I was uh, nervous, but Buffalo got it done. We shall see what happens. A reminder about that special offer. Uh, I should plug myself. It was a winning week one in the NFL for yours. Truly. Plus, you go back to last year in college, 25 and 11. My last 36 CFB play, 67% start this year, six and three. I nailed all three of CFB sides on Saturday. And I, for at least six weeks, will be talking about how I had Northern Illinois against Notre Dame because that may be really (laughs) smart. At least for 24 hours, I also had San Jose State over Air Force and ULM over UAB. Trig, has there been a worse hire in sports over the last five years than UAB picking Trent Dilfer to be their football coach? Oh, I mean, 
You could you could scour college sports to find one, I'm sure, but it's probably up there. All right. Guess what? Trig did such a good job. He's going to be back on the program tomorrow so we can have more conversation. There are two college games uh, to talk about, including ranked versus ranked. Uh, one of only two ranked versus ranked games this week. Uh, believe it or not, the other one involves Boston College. But we'll be talking Kansas State, Arizona, likely on the show tomorrow. Some more Major League Baseball. If you already haven't done so, guys, smash that like button. Don't uh, forget to comment down below with your favorite bets for Thursday as well. And subscribe. To the Wedge Talk YouTube channels. This show is on every day, Monday through Friday. Don't forget about the Power Five either. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.